Today we're going to be looking at modelling with graphs. Um, graphs are used in lots of real life situations to um, give us a model of how things change. So an example could be in a carpet shop. <clears throat> the length of the carpet versus price will increase linearly. Um, <coughs> hypothetically speaking, as time passes, the amount of fuel in your car could decrease linearly. Um, that is a bad example because in real life you accelerate and decelerate at greater rates and that's going to change the different way that you drive is going to change the way in which the amount of fuel goes down but if you were driving at a constant speed for a period of time the amount of fuel would decrease like this. Um, so let's see how we can use the use um, graphs in our questions. So imagine we are running a bath The water from the tap um, fills at a rate of 12 litres per minute. Always pay attention to any of these kind of questions for the units used because sometimes they might change. So we're dealing with um, litres here and minutes here. You might be doing something and then it'll slip into uh, maybe a different time, maybe seconds or hours or a different unit. Um, you need to be aware because that's when you're going for the higher grades, that's a way that they will test to see if, if you're thinking it through and if you um, are on top of these sorts of things. So we aside. Okay, so our bath is filling a rate of 12 litres per minute and she runs the bath for 10 minutes. So first question, how much water is in the bath after it run. So it's run for 10 minutes. Every minute 12 litres are added. So for 10 minutes you're going to have 12 times 10 so that is 1,200 litres. <clears throat> so we stay in the bath for 20 minutes then it empties at a rate 15 litres per minute. Draw a graph. So we're going to have time and amount of water, we'll say volume, water, and this is in, in litres, so it starts off with zero, when it's filled we're going to have um, the 12, uh, 1200 and that takes, you know it takes 10 minutes, so we're going to go up here and then stay in the bath for 20 minutes so that's going to be up to the 30 and then the bath is emptied and um, it will empty we need to calculate how long it's going to take to empty so 
the drain time is going to be 120 divided by 15. Well, I've written too many zeros here. Yep. So 100, 120, so it's 120 litres of water in the bath, and it goes away in 15 litres per second. So that gives us 8 minutes. So from, so it's going to be 38 min, minutes there. And this is 1, 2, oh. So there is our graph. <coughs> Always good to look back over your simple arithmetic to make sure you've not made any silly mistakes. Let's have a wee look at another one. So, water's poured at a steady rate in different containers. So we've got four containers. One is a nice cylinder. One is kind of like a cone, bucket shape thing. One is like a lampshade. And one's a pointy cone. <coughs> and we're going to have some graphs. And each graph is going to show the rate at which we're going to be filling our buckets. So these, this is A, B, C and D and this is P, Q, R and this, and this is the depth and time. I'm just going to call it depth, time, depth, time, depth, time. And we want to match each of these graphs with the correct um, graph. Now let's look. Let's look at the linear one first. This is the easiest one to interpret. So as time goes on, the bucket is filling at a steady rate. Now this corresponds to A. And the reason is when we pour water in, there's a uniform, the sides of this, this container are uniform, so it's going to fill up at a uniform rate. If we look at this one, imagine pouring water into this one. It's going to fill up the depth is going to increase quicker at the bottom because it's narrower at the bottom than at the top. So we need to find for the graph for bucket B one where the rate is quick at the bottom and then slows at the top. And then for this one you need we need to find one where it is slow at the bottom because it's got a wider base and quicker at the top. So I've not drawn these very well. I'm going to draw this a bit better because this doesn't show nice. P and R are far too similar. So we've got that's better. <coughs> so we've got two where the rate is quicker at the bottom, this one and this one have got a faster rate at the bottom and then it slows but this one has a much steeper rate so P and D are going to go together because if you this one here is going to be filling up the depth is going to go up really fast faster than here because the width differs and this is the one B and R are going to go together and that then leaves C and S. So C goes slow at the beginning and then the rate increases because it's a wider base and a narrower top. 
Um, these kind of questions are quite common in the exams, so being able to interpret what's happening with these kind of graphs is um, a really important skill. So I hope this helps.